People often think of French food as being very rule-ridden, but in fact, there's a lot of room for improvisation. Chicken in vinegar, a simple saute with a light sauce and tomatoes, mustard pork, a loin in a creamy piquant sauce, fish with green olive tapenade, beef tenderloin with remoulade sauce, a tangy sauce with capers and tarragon, and Frenchified popcorn. Popcorn made the old-fashioned way and made French with herbe de Provence and garlic butter. When you have a well-stocked pantry, you have loads of freedom. Chicken and vinegar is a classic French saute, and it's great for anyone whose heart breaks to think of pouring a bottle of wine over a chicken. And I have a whole chicken cut into eight pieces here, which I am seasoning with salt and pepper. Saute comes from the word jump, because the pan is really hot when you put things into it, and they're supposed to Make them do a little jump, a little olive oil. Now I'm going to brown the chicken on all sides, starting with the legs and the wings. I'm going to work in batches here because if I crowd the pan and they're going to sweat and they're not going to get a nice brown, crunchy skinned edge. The thing about sautéing meats is that once you get them in the pan, you have to leave them alone for a while so that they get a lovely golden skin, which gives good flavor. So you can't be messing around with them, as I'm always tempted to do. get some garlic. Now, I'm going to add this garlic. Now look at it hot. It's sautéing. And now, the star ingredient from my pantry, vinegar, instead of wine, and lots of it. Just by the way, I use white wine vinegar, but you can use red wine too. It's also good. I'm just scraping up those yummy sticky bits from the bottom. And I'm going to boil it down about by half. But don't worry, it doesn't taste acidic at the end. It really mellows out. It just gives the right amount of tartness. It makes a great saute. Now the chicken can go back in. Now I'm going to add a spoonful of tomato paste. And I'm adding a couple of tomatoes just roughly chopped. Now I'm just one other flavoring to add. A bouquet garni is a little bouquet of flavorings, including a bay leaf, a sprig of thyme, and a couple of sprigs of parsley. And you can even just use the stems if you want to save the green tops for something else, because the stems give a really nice deep parsley flavor. Just tie that in a little bundle. And that'll be really easy to fish out. And give a final splash of a bit of chicken stock, just to mellow everything out. I'm going to let that simmer for about 20 minutes, and then it will be nice and tender. This looks great. The tomatoes have all broken down and made this a nice, thick sauce. Very rustic and rusty colored. Oh, and I can pull out the bouquet garni. All that flavor will be right in the sauce. And pull the chicken from the sauce. The last thing this needs is just a little butter. And I'm gonna turn off the heat before I whisk it in because I don't want it to go all oily. I just want it to meld with the sauce. Meld, not melt.
That's all nice and thick and glossy, unstrained because I'm in a rustic mood. And it's delicious. I don't even have to season it. Perfect. It's ready to put on a platter. Such a lovely orange color. Rusty orange. Rustic orange. Mmm. It's so mellow. You wouldn't believe you could get such a mellow sauce with vinegar. Now just wait till you see what I can do with a jar of mustard. With a few simple steps, it becomes a smooth, only slightly piquant sauce. stocked pantry you can buy almost anything you want on the way home and just decide what to do with it when you get there. I've got a pork tenderloin and some nice white fish and with two of my favorite staple pantry ingredients I'm going to make them into great dishes. I'll start with my pork tenderloin and my star ingredient is mustard. Just simple Dijon mustard. It has a great tangy taste and you wouldn't believe what a wonderful sauce it makes. First I want to season this beautiful tenderloin on all sides. And then just a bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. Let's put the tenderloin right in there. And then lots of mustard. More than you think you want. mustard all over the pork. Slather it. Get a massage. I'm going to bake it and then make the sauce. I'm just adding a little bit of water to keep it moist and that way it will make its own sauce for me to work with afterwards. I'm just preparing a few ingredients to add at the end. Shallot and a bit of rosemary too. Perfect little piece of pork for one or two. There's a little liquid left. I keep the meat warm while I make the sauce. And then just right with this pan, which it's metal so it's okay, I'm gonna turn on the heat right on the stove and add a little bit of butter and my shallots. Just let the shallots soften a little. Splash of white wine, and rosemary. As the wine reduces, the flavors concentrate. And when it reaches that point, a nice spoonful of creme fraiche, which makes a wonderful tangy sauce. Now before I put that on the plate, I'm just going to carve the meat, which is still nice and warm. sauce underneath the meat because I want to show it off. It's such a delicate, beautiful sauce. So elegant and yet it's so quick. Mmm. I can't believe I made that with a jar of mustard. And with a little jar of mustard you actually end up with a rather elegant looking dish. Here's another good example of how a well-stocked pantry trains you to be an improviser in the kitchen. This is a recipe for sole with tapenade, which I got from a friend. The way she did it was to have phyllo pastry packages around white fish with black tapenade. I have no phyllo pastry, I have no black tapenade, so I'm improvising and doing it my way. I just have tiny, thin sole fillets. They're going to cook really, really quickly. Season these with salt and pepper. Not too much salt because tapenade has salt in it from the anchovies. Now 
I'm spreading over some green tapenade. You can buy this and have it in jars in your pantry as much as you want. So just smear a little tapenade right on the fillets. You can use other fish too. You can use halibut, that's really good. Any white fish that holds its shape. Now that doesn't look so hot like that, but it will in a minute. With a few thin slices of tomato on top. And finally, from the dried herb section of my pantry, Herbe de Provence, which is the best French herb mixture. Just sprinkling a little bit on top, and then just a little dribble of olive oil. That's on broil, it will take minutes. When the fish is this thin, it doesn't even take five minutes. It is so Provençal. It's such a pretty summery dish. And I love flavors from the south of France. They're so bright and punchy and light. Mmm, good tapenade if I do say so myself. I wonder what my pantry has in store for beef tenderloin. An easy to cook beef tenderloin is just as easy to dress up when you transform pantry ingredients into a remoulade sauce. The great thing about having a well-stocked pantry is that it means you can buy whatever suits your fancy on the way home from work and then decide what to do with it when you get there. I've bought a roast beef, but I don't just want to serve it plain. I want to make a remoulade sauce, and that involves a pantry raid. I'm going to start with my beef. Just season the meat before you cook it. This is a nice piece of tenderloin on all sides with salt and pepper. Give it a little olive oil rub. It doesn't have a lot of fat, so giving it a little bit. This needs about 12 minutes for the first pound and then 10 minutes for every pound afterwards. So in this case, about 20 minutes. At high heat, that's how the French cook their red meats. 400 degrees tss, until it's done. <laughs> dress that up. I'm making a remoulade sauce with some of my favorite French pantry ingredients. Capers, which are tiny little buds. Just a little salty. Mm. Cornichon, or gherkins they're also called. A nice pickled taste and crunch. Dijon mustard, anchovy paste, and tarragon vinegar. This is white wine vinegar, and in France it often has a sprig of tarragon in it. It's basically mayonnaise with these flavorings in it, and that's really easy to make. You just need an egg yolk to start. Then a teaspoon or two of mustard. I always put mustard in mayonnaise, but for remoulade I put double. Then a nice spoonful of anchovy paste, and just a teaspoon of tarragon vinegar. Just whisk those together. Just like mayonnaise, you start off by adding oil drop by drop. I'm using olive oil to begin with because I like the flavor. Just a little at first. If you put it all in at once, it's going to separate on you. Get an emulsion going and then you can add it more quickly. That's enough olive oil for me. I find it can be a bit bitter if I use all olive oil. So now just some grapeseed oil or any other plain oil that you have you can use. And just keep 
keep adding it slowly, whisking until it's nice and thick. The more oil you add, you'd think it would thin it out, but in fact, it thickens it. Oh, I could just jump right into that. Look at that. Great texture. Now, for flavorings, it needs a bit of salt. Just getting my seasonings right before I add the other ingredients. A lemon. Now for the fun stuff. First, two tablespoons of capers. Chop a couple of gherkins, cornichon, and now lots of fresh herbs. I'm using tarragon and classic and remoulade and flat leaf parsley. And just stir all those lovely pantry ingredients in. That's going to be great on my beef. I'm just going to put it in the fridge until I need it. You can make that early in the day, but remember to keep it in the fridge because it has raw egg in it. Now, hello you. This is perfect Sunday lunch stuff. I'm going to let it rest for at least 10 minutes before I carve it so that the juices can run back out through it. And I might even let it get cold because it's still good with remoulade that way. Just before serving, get out your sauce. Drape it over the meat. I love those crunchy pickles and capers. Mm. Great sauce for meat. I just have one more trip to the pantry to make for Frenchy popcorn. I had an emergency appetizer idea that's a bit of a joke, but a yummy joke. admired how the French shop and I've adopted their ways too which is to always have a stocked pantry and then you can just buy little fresh things on the way home and make yourself great things from all the little secrets you have in your pantry this is a recipe for a Frenchified popcorn because popcorn is of course not at all French but by the time I'm done with it it will be I'm gonna make popcorn the old-fashioned way and first though I want to get a little butter melting because it couldn't possibly be French without butter. And a garlic clove. You want to pull it out at the end, so you don't want it crushed, just two big chunks. And because it's a fat, it's going to absorb all that nice garlic flavor. And then popcorn the old-fashioned way, in oil. I'm using grapeseed oil because it has a very high smoking point, which means that it's not going to go bitter tasting. I'm using about a cup. To be generous. Makes a lot more than you think. Now this is so much more fun than air popping, don't you think? I love watching it just grow, explode in the pan. I mean, who was I expecting? 
So, nothing French about that yet, but here's the trick. Herbe de Provence. I want the garlic to stay behind, but the garlicky butter to come out. Get it all coated with the garlicky butter and the herbs. And don't forget, salt. I'm using fleur de sel, because that makes it even more French. It's very good. I mean, not that I'm surprised, but sometimes you wonder about yourself. It's delicious. That would make a great little aperitif for any of my pantry dishes. I've made chicken in vinegar, a simple saute with a light sauce and tomatoes, mustard pork, a loin in a creamy piquant sauce, fish with green olive tapenade, beef tenderloin with remoulade sauce, a tangy sauce with capers and tarragon, and Frenchified popcorn. Popcorn made the old fashioned way and made French with herbe de Provence and garlic butter. I think I spent enough time in the pantry today. I'm gonna go watch a French movie.